Hello, everyone, and welcome to the South American edition of the Innovation Lab Talks Smart Thermal Chain Management Solution Series. Uh, I welcome you all to this session, our speakers and our participants, uh, to, this, to this session when, where we are going to discuss some of the challenges, challenges that thermal chain managers uh, are facing nowadays. Thermal chain logistics uh, has been growing uh, in the last years and, uh, and it's a growing sector still. And with all growth comes, uh, comes challenges and difficulties and obstacles to surpass. Um, focusing on solutions on this webinar, we will address uh, one of the challenges that uh, thermal chain uh, logistics managers face uh, and we will be analyzing some some answers some solutions for these for these challenges so as i said we will be starting uh with a specific problem in thermal chain logistics and in our session this problem will be presented by diego dagoto he works at pfizer argentina paraguay and uruguay as a head of supply chain and discussing solution, the solution for this challenge, uh, we'll, we will have Cristian Carvalho, uh, partner and project manager uh, at Advanced Products Brazil, and Esteban Tubert, research and development at Cindio. And afterwards, on this session, we also explain and discuss the science behind the solution uh, we are discussing here. And to discuss this, the, the, the science, the underpinning science on this solution, we will have with us Anna Magalhães of the Center of Nanotechnology and Smart Materials, CENTI, uh, focusing on, on materials used on this solution and what, why they were used. Also, Albert Rete from SmartKai, uh, who will explain how can uh, simulation softwares contribute for the development of this solution and uh, new solutions. And we will have Cristina Silva, Associate Professor of the Faculty of Biotechnology, the Universidade Católica Portuguesa, and Beatriz Bernardes, looking at how this new technology uh, developed and uh, behaved uh, in the very several texts, tests that were, um, that were made. Uh, I, can, I also want to uh, let our audience know that at any time during the session, uh, you can uh, ask questions to, to one of our speakers, um, directing them in the, the chat uh, below in the screen. Just uh, ask your questions and say who it is directed to. And afterwards, in the questions and answers moment, we will also um, well, direct your questions to the given speaker you want to, to, the, to ask the question to. So I will start um, giving the floor to, to Diego Dagota who will um, tell us what's the thermal chain challenge we are speaking about here. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to advance to my uh, slide. Can you help me? Can you hear me? Good morning, yes. everybody. Yes, yes, good yes. Morning. Can you move my slide because I can't? Yeah. Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for this invitation and also for this nice introductions. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Diego Fernando Dagoto. I have been working for Pfizer since 1992. So that means I have more than 20 years experience in this industry. Uh, my topic today is supply chain 4.0, the challenge and opportunity for temperature sensitive product that we identify here in Argentina. I am responsible for Argentina. Um, before sharing the project that we have been working on, I would like to say that this journey began five years ago with uh, working together with the AP solution and the beginning was uh, okay try to to find a way to improve the accuracy of the thermal packaging solution that we had and, and start thinking about the improved environmental sustainability after many many meetings discussions um, 
solution that AP provides. Uh, we have an agreement to the, the simple idea that we call our purpose, that is transform and improve our distribution model during the last mile of transportation for temperature sensitive products. Uh, but working together during this time, we, f we find the opportunity, amazing opportunity, uh, when we start together thinking about if we can create real economic value and also improve the environmental sustainability, when we combine this kind of solution, thermal solution, with the IoT technology that is coming better and better. The scope of the project was very simple, Argentina market, because this is my responsibility. We, we split the project in two phases uh, in order to deal with the, the challenge and also the range of the temperature. The phase one is two and eight degrees, and the second is between 15 and 25. Bear in mind this purpose, uh, I would like to start with the challenges that we have three main challenges identified, temperature excursion, new development pipeline, and last mile logistic. The temperature excursion in supply chain, in our supply chain by biopharmaceutical product, uh, when we have this kind of event, uh, the risk of the product damage increase a lot. The, the second challenge, new development pipeline, this is my opinion, uh, increase a lot uh, because um, it's becoming more important because the current biopharmaceutical industry is launching products faster than faster, especially biological cell and gene therapy, and probably it's true that we are seeing on the COVID vaccine and other new products. New products will have high temperature sensitive and short shelf life. What does mean for us as a professional logistic? Uh, probably we will have a product with a, a tight bandwidth so that represents a, a risk, a challenge to protect the integrity of the product and also the a risk uh, and challenge to improve the environmental uh, ecosystem. The last part uh, of the project is our priorities in order to keep simple, we identify three, reduce risk aver, ensure compliance, embrace data-driven decision-making. The first one, reduce risk aver, is very clear, it's about temperature excursion and reduce environmental impact. We already implement the strategy, phase chain material, PCM, uh, and also inverse logistics that we combine uh, an agreement with the current LSP. And finally, we are able to eliminate the APS box. The status of the project to the phase one is completed. And now we are going uh, to implement the phase two to the 1525 with different solutions, not only phase change material and, all, and other solution that the AP is provided to us. The second priority is ensure compliance. And this is clear, is real end -end tracking of the shipment, temperature and localization. Now we are implementing the electronic Bluetooth sensor. We start two or three years ago with a different technology and now we decide to the Bluetooth. Um, the status is ongoing, phase one, and our expectation is to add the phase two to the beginning of the next year. The last one priority is embrace data-driven decision-making and it's just to predict and optimize uh, analytic uh, how, um, um, this is my personal idea, is to build a control tower when we receive all of this information that is coming from this sensor. And the idea is, of course, manage alert, but uh, more important for us is improve the customer service. Uh, fortunately, we are going in the phase one. This, this month, we start to work with the, with, with the NIST portal. So now uh, our expectation is to implement during the year the phase one and next year also the, the phase two. Um, that is all of my presentation. I hope uh, you like it. I, I am able to receive any question about this. So thank you very much for your time.
Thank you very much, Diego. Yes, and I, I, I want to recall our participants that if you want to ask Diego or other, all our other speakers um, regarding this, the, this, his presentation and what we're going to talk about in the seminar, you can address your questions in, uh, in the, the chat. Um, below questions and answers also available to answer some questions if you have to is Manu Pizarro he's CEO of Advanced Borders Products Portugal and he will be ready to answer questions in the end of our uh, of our presentation also but now I have um, Cristiano Carvalho from Advanced Products Brazil and you are going to uh, ask us I didn't get it wrong right it's Brazil. Yes. Sorry. Um, uh, and I want you are going to uh, tell us what is the intelligence solution we're talking about. Okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Um, we desenvolve. Uh, sorry. Uh, Eco Smart Cover Semi Innovation in the Drive of Company and their Sustainability, adapting the needs, the operation or challenge getting the solution uh, our goal to create and develop we first need to assess existing problem or limitations on our day we detect three scenarios and possible improvements oh sorry um we have uh, three scenarios, long mile, medium mile, last mile. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, more for last mile. Uh, we have uh, in Brazil and other places here, uh, many, many logistics about the truck and van. We have a main problem uh, with the, temp the temperature here. Uh, in Brazil, high temperature, it's difficult for many uh, companies uh, the product uh, sensibility uh, before, because this uh, uh, we have a uh, improvement. Uh, Except for example, in São Paulo, we have a uh, five hour, five hours to go the middle uh, country, country, country place. Uh, you 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 choose you use uh, the smart code PCM. Uh, with uh, have um, double protection for the transportation. Uh, medicaments or vaccines. Uh, <clears throat> Sir, uh, <clears throat> smart code PCM uh, is different. This differentiate uh, in the market because uh, we have been uh, much high uh, in the. Use the passive code PCM uh, for to control temperature two and eight degrees or fifteen to twenty five degrees and frozen products. Uh, we have a monitor system uh, together the the cover and. The monitor system uh, give for for em employers or to lo the localization geolocalization the the product and the temperature and the uh, eco friendly has held able uh, in Brazil is. Not common use a logistic reverse. It's a future future. The work here. Um, we have a man size. Is 
it's very simple. They use this. Uh, active code uh, in active code motors and batteries uh, we we may have found so we need to have a time that we can take an action that does not lose its quiet and investment has a backup solutions for the situations code have temperature control transporting airplane boats train truck van this is the product uh, we we test uh, four grills uh, temperature and we have a uh, 10 the 10 hours uh, the control temperature and two eight grills is uh, the product is uh, have a, a four four layers of the materials, and the PCN is impregnated uh, and and one first the the layer is uh, a different uh, products and you know, have a comparison with the the simple cover. Uh, this scenario to use uh, the smart cover uh, for more situation, more sec security, because the chief code uh, we have a problem. You have an other uh, control or for not not lost the the products because the the fault the energy or other problems <clears throat> and plane uh, did case operations point tend to be by plane or truck by plane uh, or van we arrive in 11 and 15 hours to many place and I will show later uh, about the line dedicates. Train, find uh, the same form. In Brazil, um, it's not common use uh, train but the uh, other country uh, how the Argentina and the others place to use this is completely truck van is the more uh, similar the the same place in in Sao Paulo use the truck and van uh, this farm uh, you have double protection and uh, you, you minimize the impacts or with uh, high temperatures. Ship, therefore, <clears throat> warehouse is very uh, problem because the the high temperatures. Uh, when to arrive with the airplane or the truck to stay in warehouse and, and go to the truck, uh, you have a cross docking. The a smart cover protect your products. Uh, The same with the scenarios and play or train and van or truck. You you have a uh, more control your your products. Facebook holds. <clears throat> uh, can you see uh, 
the situations. Uh, in Brazil, you have uh, many, many works here. And you have five hours and it's in mid, mid, mid seats. Uh, and uh, when you use uh, the transportator with uh, a truck, the 15 hours you arrive in, in South, South Brazil or North, North is very complicated because the high temperatures. Uh, in this case, I go with smart cover, uh, protect uh, more, more the products have a more, more uh, security. These examples, five hours to make the main place with us with security. In Brazil, airplane you you want to make many place with more security. Uh, this case is in, in the world in hotels. Uh, integrated assist that more monitors and look at whenever possible. We can have a control of where they allocate minimizing losses. Uh, in situations authorized, do not have difficulty in your transit and customs. We are talking about the uh, continuous direct lines and handled by specialists operation. Besides, the solution must be easy to regroup your this case, uh, it's a comparate uh, standard cover, basic, and PCM is smart cover. You have a 50% uh, improvement performance. You have uh, uh, the graphics and percent percentation. Start standard cover five hours and Smart code per CMA fifteen percent more. Uh, we have a uh, different uh, uh, colors with uh, warehouse or employer uh, looking for the products. Uh, green have green talk about two. Uh, two eight grills, orange fifteen or two fifteen grills, orange and frozen. You have a line a blue. Is difference is differentiation when you have uh, many movement movementation the products and warehouse or transportation. An airplane or truck or pump. Okay, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Thank I, you, I, Christian. I you. Thank you, Christian, for your presentation. I believe Manuel Pizar wants to add uh, something that uh, to no, was being said. Now, give a thank to Diego Lagoto for this interve intervention and the opportunity that has given to our network to develop and uh, uh, use these systems in market. When, when, uh, the challenge of the Diego is more last mile, and I believe with these solutions, we can do it uh, easily because we, even if you have uh, temperature control in the truck, or even if you want only ambient, I believe most of the operations uh, in Sao Paulo and I believe in Buenos Aires, this, the same is a large part of the market. So, and the, 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 the challenge of Diego is more the last mile. They don't use planes. It's all, I believe it's going to do all of them with tracks or vans. And, uh, and I believe in Argentina, uh, uh, you must have inverse logistics. And uh, is essential or 
even mandatory. I don't know, but the DM can help you if it's like, but I believe it is uh, in in our um, region in Portugal, most of the time, some, some goods and some medicines must have invest logistic in the qualifying process. No, it's just to, to thank you to Cristiano, but that idea is uh, uh, with the, we didn't put them in this stage of the, 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 the partnership that who, who APP, more AP Argentina have been with Pfizer. Who, who we are uh, just finished the part of the, monetiz the monetization and the traceability, uh, very important, as Diego said, because now we, you, the, the medicines are more sensitive and um, using biological. Uh, and uh, so, uh, excursionism is a great problem. And so we have to have the direct operations very well done it. And, uh, and uh, one of the things that we have talks to is the sustainability. So when we can use, and he talks about EPS box, EPS box that they stop it because of the, the footprint of the ecological matter. And, uh, and using these covers, we can easily make uh, in the big Sao Paulo or in the big Buenos Aires, using uh, many reuses of the system and uh, we have uh, control doctor edited so we can use you can see if the operation we can do it or not it's easier to qualify the routes and easy to qualify just uh, is, i think it is important just to say to put this in the, the, the presentation that cristiano already do it thanks thank you thank you thank you manuel um and um, maybe to explain a bit more about the, about the, the solution and uh, specifically the materials, um, I can pass to Stevan Tubert. Uh, so, Esteban, can you please explain the, the technology used in terms of materials? Sure. Um, first, thank you all for joining the webinar. Briefly, my name is Esteban Tubert, and I specialize in the design, development, and testing of PCM materials at Sindio. As you just heard, one of the core materials that brings key functionality to this new uh, cover introduced by APP is a new PCM molecule that we have synthesized. So some of the issues that I will cover here are, what is the nature of PCM materials in general? Which are the differences among available PCM molecules in regards to efficiency and safety? And finally, what are the variables that, that we take into consideration when we develop a PCM material? So as you just heard, PCMs uh, is the acronym for phase change material. And these are chemical substances that uh, present convenient thermal properties, particularly melting and freezing points. It is at these temperatures points when, uh, where substances exchange heat due to the change of phase or state from solid to liquid and vice versa. As you may know, the most widely used PCM is simply plain water, which has both excellent thermal and safety properties for cold chain shipments. But there is one big problem problem when using water and it, it is the fact that water melts at zero degrees Celsius and as you know this can lead to lower than desired temperatures within the transported cargo such as deviations below two degrees centigrade and even freezing of the goods. So right now as many of you know uh, as the industry has introduced more valuable drugs and molecules that derivate from proteins and other biomolecules which are extremely sensitive to temperature drifts the focus in the industry has been shifted to replacing water with other chemical substances that present more convenient melting points, such as four or five degrees centigrade. And this is to protect the cargo. So which of the currently available substances are um, useful for, for these requirements? And sadly, the answer is that not too many. And most of the ones that actually have desirable thermal features tend to be toxic or flammable. So the universe of possible molecules is extremely limited. I will switch the uh, slide now. Uh, whoop. There you go. Here. Um, so we can distinguish two main types of PCMs. The first one, uh, he, here we have the water, and the first uh, group of, uh, of uh, PCM materials is uh, salt hydrates. And the second is paraffin waxes. These two combines represent almost 90% of the phase change materials that we use in pharma applications. So what's the point in, in innovating within uh, the PCM uh, genera if we already have good candidates? And the truth is that PCMs are being used in pharma applications since the 2000s, but the ones that are still in use have been barely changed since that time. 
However, um, the PCM research field, I mean the scientific research, the research field for PCMs is highly active. In 2019, when I performed a, a, a Google Scholar search for the keyword PCM, I, I need to change the here. When I uh, performed a Google Scholar search for the keyword PCM plus temperature, I found uh, 284,000 results. And today when I redo that same search, I found 100,000 more results. And this is just to showcase how dynamic and, and, and active this field is. So this means that we have safer and more efficient molecules, at least in the scientific side of, of the question, to be used as PCMs. And the question is then, why using old petroleum-based PCMs if we can use sustainable and safer alternatives? And we'll switch here with, nope. Nope, I need to go to the previous one, but I cannot change it. Can, can you please uh, change the, uh, the previous, that one? Yeah, thanks. So when we are describing conventional PCMs, we should say that they're generally petroleum-based. They present several health hazards, which can lead to injuries, uh, sometimes to very serious ones. And this is the reason why they're generally packed in bulky and hard containers. This is to avoid spillage. Um, they are overall non-sustainable and lastly they tend to present a high degree of supercooling which means that the melting and freezing points are quite separated and this reduces the chance of creating products for both summer and winter applications. On the other hand what we call next generation PCMs are generally plant-based or based in ionic liquids and as such next generation PCMs are much more sustainable. They virtually do not present health hazards um, so we do not we do not need to um, to pack these PCMs in, in bulky containers, and we can use flexible packaging such as the APP smart cover. Lastly, um, next generation PCMs have a very reduced degree of supercooling, which means that melting and freezing points are virtually the same. So they can be used for winter and summer applications at the same time. So the last two slides, the next one, please are to showcase that um, these new P PCMs that we have generated, and of course other people too, present excellent thermal properties comparable or better than those of conventional PCMs, but with the added advantages that we have uh, mentioned. So the conclusion would be that next generation PCMs allows for great performance when incorporated into innovative solutions such as the APP smart cover. That's, that's all. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you for explaining us the, the importance uh, of these of this material, these PCMs. Um, but just to explain a bit more the impact of the material is chosen uh, to to this uh, to the smart cover. Um, I am going to ask Ana Magalhães to join us and to to tell us a bit more about all the materials used and the impact they had on this on this solution. And are you here? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> the synergy of materials for this type of solution is crucial for us to obtain a solution with high thermal efficiency. A small change in materials makes all the difference. This is where Senti participates. Senti is a center for nanotechnology and smart materials, and it's an institute of new technologies with multi sector orientation. We equip with the cutting edge technology that promotes activities of research, uh, technological development, innovation, and engineering in the fields of smart and functional materials and system. Uh, next one, please. Uh, okay. Uh, Senti, Senti is founded in 2006. It is the result of a fruitful corporation of three universities, two technological centers, and one institute of new technologies, all recognized for their national and international relevance. Senti is based on three main areas, functional materials and solutions, smart materials and systems, plus design and engineering. Sorry. Senti explore advanced enabling the developing, testing, prototyping, and scale up of solution for the market. 
as is the case with smart cover PCM. Senti play an important role in these developments due to its transfer skills and the technologies in the different stage of development of innovative products with customized functional properties and improved performance, namely in the R&D strategy for the development of multi-layer structures with thermal management properties with using different textile materials and fashion materials. In addition, Senti can perform several tests in order to evaluate the performance of the innovative product, both during its optimization and the final validation in a real environment. In this project with APP, the main goal was the development of solution for thermal management, mainly using phase change materials. Our contribution was the development of multi-layer with PCMs. Thus, we started with the selection of promising materials, namely 3D textiles and no oven structures with high thermal insulation as well as polymeric materials. In this selection, their cost and their performance were considered and we determined their chemical and physical properties namely their thermal properties and their absorption capabilities. Regarding the phase change materials, the chosen one was of best origin based on oleic acids, taking into account its thermal performance and its sustainability. After selecting the materials, the layer with PCM was built and their performance was evaluated. This evaluation was carried out by approximating this experimental simulation to a real scale. The tests were performed in a climate chamber where the structure with PCMs was placed outside the product package and over time the temperature was monitored with data loggers. The temperature profiles follow were those of, of north winter and of north summer. The potential of PCM layer in the cover was evaluated and the structures were compared between then with and without PCM layer. The results show a significant increase in the thermal energy capacity when we use this flexible layer of PCMs. For the most critical profile with high temperatures of north summer, there was an increase of seven hours of condition until the system reached thermal equilibrium when compared to the cover without PCM layer. Regarding the Afnor winter profile, it reached 15 hours of conditioner. Considering that this simulation was performed with empty package, the obtained results were very promising and in the future, they can be better. This is the sample and the sustainable science behind this product. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anna, so much for this brief explanation on the, the important part uh, that materials took on developing this, this solution. But uh, there's also an important part based on software and uh, on the, the, the testing uh, of these solutions via the, the, the softwares. So I, I would ask Albert Rete from, from SmartKai, how can uh, the software be used in this type of solutions and what's its importance um, in the development of this kind of innovations? Okay. Um... Um, yes, uh, the software that we introduced uh, about five years ago uh, is trying to uh, compute the temperatures within a thermal packaging given a, a virtual model of the packaging solution and the payload and uh, the outside temperature. And this can be used to uh, in, in, in many ways. So uh, just a few words about the company. It has been founded by Stefan Brown. Uh, and he's doing this for a uh, 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 kind of work in thermal engineering for more than 20 years. Um, and five years ago, as I said, we, we used the thermal packaging software, which I will talk a, little, uh, a bit more later. And uh, since about two years, we are working exclusively on the uh, uh, software suite that we call the virtual cold chain. The name SmartCAE is uh, 
to some extent independent of the uh, smart cover that you have. We are an independent software company, uh, but of course both are very smart solutions. So uh, what does the software provide as, as a solution? So the, the first uh, part of our software package is the uh, system that we call a thermal packaging. Uh, and it helps with uh, design choices for thermal packaging. And at the core, as I said, is a, a, a simulation program which uses basic physics that is known for a long time and uh, modern numeric methods so that uh, you can calculate this, uh, uh, the temperatures within a, a, a package given the uh, material properties and the geometry and uh, the outside temperatures. And this can be used in many ways in the uh, design of packaging solutions. So you can, of course, learn how changes in geometry and the materials affect the performance of the packaging solution. You can also check whether a given packaging design will work for a given payload or temperature profile because uh, that might depend on high thermal mass payload or low thermal mass payload. And of course, the outside temperature profile also plays a big role. It, it makes a difference whether you're sending on a winter profile or on a summer profile in a hot environment or a cold environment. And so you can check whether a given package design will work for a given challenge. You can also uh, uh, do tests like what is the best choice for cool packs and conditioning or for, for the PCM uh, materials that you can use. There is various uh, possibilities as we have heard. And uh, it's not always clear whether one or the other will work better or good enough. And uh, also you have to uh, precondition these PCMs to either, co to, to, to either be frozen or, or molten. And uh, it makes of course a difference which state you start with. And uh, something that is, I think, very difficult to do with uh, just experiments is that you can analyze how robust your design is considering variations of material properties or the ge geometry or the initial conditioning because uh, all of these have tolerances and sometimes if you are very sensitive to the, the uh, differences in these the variations in these properties you can uh, create uh, solutions which which only work sometimes and not always and uh, you can basically do some analysis of this as well but not only for the design of, of thermal packaging systems but you can also do uh, something that we call a uh, lane risk or a, a lane virtual lane qualification so you can now uh, generate historical temperature profiles for a given lane for example, the first few years based on uh, historical temperatures that one can download from um, uh, weather stations. And our software does all these more or less automatically. Then you can, when you have a virtual model, as I explained before, uh, you can run this virtual model against all these temperature profiles. And what you, you will get out of this is an, a number of expected failures or paths for the packaging solution for that scenario. And that will give you uh, possibilities to, to make a risk assessment on what you could do in other way. And when you have these uh, numbers of failures and passes, you can also use these to go one step further and uh, do something that we call the total cost of ownership of different packaging solutions, which take into account the, uh, the, the uh, cost for the packaging solution, the cost for transport, because different packaging solutions will have different weights and volumes, so they are not the same, uh, don't have the same transportation costs. And uh, you can also uh, incorporate the, uh, the costs for excursions uh, and failures. If you have an excursion, you have to usually to do a, a kappa analysis, which costs you money. And if you have failures, you of course have to replace or uh, dispose the, the failed product. How would that work? Uh, look like? I have just a few screenshots to finish up my talk. So I make this quite easy to, to use. So you need some basic understanding of, of uh, term processes but other than that it is more like like uh, minecraft or lego so you define some bricks the geometry of them and their material properties 
just as what uh, has been shown before for the PCM, for example, the latent heat, the melting point, and uh, the the, uh, the other properties that are relevant for this uh, kind of sim uh, uh, simulation. Once you have made this uh, definition, you will uh, define the outside temperature. In this case, it was imported from an Excel file. You can also do it in a tabular way. Um, and uh, then you can uh, run the virtual model against this profile and you get is the temperatures at various points within the package. So if you uh, would do that with a sensor, you would have to place the sensor at every red dot here. And what you get in the virtual model is uh, uh, the temperature as a function of time at each of these uh, locations. And uh, this is uh, what you would exactly do the same when you would do a real experiment in a thermal chamber. You would uh, wait here for uh, the, I don't know, 30 something hours, and you would have to pay for the for the heat chamber and uh, set up everything. In uh, the virtual model, you can do something like this in three minutes, roughly, which is a typical time for such a simulation. And of course, you can try out several designs and decide which works best. And for the uh, second part, the uh, lane risk or virtual qualification, uh, what I have here prepared is uh, uh, four examples. One is with no cover, another one is with a smart cover-like uh, solution, but no plan of uh, smart cover with PCM, one with a four degree and one with a 20 degree PCM. So what you would do, you would define your lane you give the, certain, the different legs uh, for flight and uh, airport uh, and, and truck transportation. And uh, given this definition, we will download the temperatures at the uh, weather stations along the line. And what you, what you get is in this case for, for, for three years, about thousands uh, historical profiles as they would have been seen when you have, would have sent uh, a package on that lane on every day from 2017 to 2019. And with these profiles, you can then run a simulation for each of the four packages. And what you get is uh, just an information of how many failures or passes you would have. And in this case, you see that uh, using a PCM would give you a 100% uh, pass for each case. So you'll you're be on the safe side. With no PCM, you have some failures, but some months would be okay. And uh, you get real numbers like, uh, for example, in this case, in August, there would be 5.6% of failures. Uh, most other uh, uh, months would be quite okay. And without a cover, you, would, you see you would fail in every single month. So you can get this kind of uh, information from the uh, risk analysis software. And uh, just as the last slide for me, this is how a, uh, um, total cost of ownership analysis would look like. You see here there's different uh, columns for the cost of the packaging, the cost of the transport, the cost for ex excursions, and the cost for product losses. And you see that we then can compare which is the cheapest solution in total. And of course, uh, in this case, one of those with no failures and no excursion is the cheapest. But you can see that while you're spending about half a million, uh, uh, euros in this case for the uh, for the packaging, you're saving quite a lot of money on the other by uh, avoiding any excursions or losses. So I think that is basically what I wanted to talk about. Thank you for uh, your attention, and uh, right on back to uh, Sophia. Thank you, Howard. Thank you for your uh, presentation and for letting us know how smart CA. A e uh, software contributes uh, to better better solutions. Um, so I would like uh, now to ask Professor Cristina Silva and um, and Beatriz Bernard to explain us uh, a bit more about how uh, the testing uh, and the contribution of Universidade Católica um, contributed to the um, to this solution and to understanding a bit more how it behaves uh, in real world. Professor Cristina. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon to uh, people in this part of the world. Uh, good morning to, to the American side. Uh, thank you also for the opportunity to, 
to explain uh, our contribution here in this uh, project. And also I want to acknowledge previous speakers because it made me my task much easier now. So the uh, uh, work uh, I did through University of Catolica was to join the APP team and try to help on um, developing this uh, smart cover. Uh, and what we did was the, to help on the optimization of the thermal performance of the cover. Uh, therefore, the main objective we had was to extend the transportation time uh, with the product within a, a temperature range. So, for example, between 2 degrees and 8 degrees, this range of uh, temperature depends on the type of product. And uh, for that, uh, um, we worked on uh, mainly two big aspects. One was to identify the materials that have a much higher thermal resistance, means that the material uh, here, I, I think you see my, my mouse, uh, if you have the product on this side, if you have uh, heating sources on, on the outside, the material helps on delaying the, the reaching of the energy to the product. So we worked on uh, identifying what were the best materials to use to, to, to the different layers of the, the smart cover. Then also together with the partners from Argentina, we uh, st uh, studied the PCM. So last week, uh, the other edition of this uh, webinar, I explained a little bit to what was the PCM, and uh, which is in, in fact a clever thermal mass, it's not an insulator, it's a, it's a kind of, a, it accumulates energy. So I'm not going to spend much time because uh, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, Stevan from Argentina explained quite well the, um, the, uh, the role of the PCMs. So we did the optimization. And with any optimization, you arrive to a given solution. So the objective was to extend the transportation time. Uh, previous speakers already explained uh, why extending this uh, transportation time, examples of uh, Brazil and Argentina. The constraints we included was to useful, uh, useful volume for transportation below the, the cover, the weight of the cover, because of course, if you put more, PCM, you can uh, transport for longer time, but then uh, maybe it will be more expensive or, or the, it's not uh, easy to assemble the, the cover. With uh, this smart cover, for example, I was discussing just, uh, last week with uh, Beatrice, two ladies, weak ladies like us, we can do it. It was not necessary, it's quite easy to assemble. Also, we considered the, the cost of the materials and also if they were eco-friendly or not. How did we do this? So we identify these materials and uh, then we used the smart guy as Harvard explained. So how useful was this uh, smart guy? The smart guy, with the smart guy, we could play with the variables. Uh, 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 simulating how the cover will behave under different transportation conditions. What is the amount of, what is the balance of PCM? What amount of PCM we should use to have a good equilibrium between the constraints and the objective? And in this, in this way, uh, we did all the calculations. I have to say that this software looks quite easy to use, but uh, for someone who, who is aware, of what is behind the, the interface of the smart guy. It's quite complex and the software even assumes many variables. We had to assume some others. Some variables are available, some uh, input data was not available. So this was uh, a big job between me and Beatrice, but we arrived to a proposal. Um, so we did the calculations and then uh, Senti, as uh, Anna Madalena has already explained, they built and they helped to build the, the idea uh, of uh, everybody involved and to test, uh, to in fact validate if 
uh, what was predicted by by the smart guy was really coming out and um, in fact it worked quite well and um, therefore uh, the the smart cover could be built and and other tests being done so this is was my part and i think now i can pass the the speech to beatrice uh, bernard thank you good evening dear hal uh, during the development of this project uh, several tests were performing by the LIACT uh, to evaluate how the materials used in the cover will improve its performance. So LIACT uh, made a lot of different tests, changing different uh, materials, uh, variables, sorry, like external temperature, tested volume, product temperature, initial product temperature, and external other external uh, conditions in this presentation um, i show you uh, a test that were made by liac the ultimate test that was uh, made uh, that compare the standard cover and smart cover pcm the standard cover it's a cover that are normally in the market that have polymeric fiber and the smart cover PCM uh, is the cover developer during the, the project and have polymeric fiber and PCM. The, these covers were made at the same conditions, at the same temperature, external temperature, with the same uh, temperature resistors in each at the same position on each cover and uh, start with the initial uh, temperature product at four uh, degrees. So the conditions were the same, so we made a test to compare the, the performance of each cover. Like the results, uh, the results obtained, it's possible to see here in these graphics, and it's possible to see that the smart cover PCM uh, take, make 10 hours of protection, while standard cover made five hours of protection. This, is, um, this time is based on the average hours. So uh, using, analyzing these results, it's possible to to comprove that the smart cover PCM improved the performance in 50%. That is really, really nice to maintain our product safe and at the temperature range that he needs to be. So, it's all. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, I would like to I would like to thank you all our speakers and uh, uh, and uh, acknowledge that, uh, that your presentations they were all very interesting. Of course, we knew that already that they would be. Um, and I would like to remind our uh, participants that you can ask questions to our speakers um, to um, to these uh, in the chat uh, in this session of questions and answers that we're having here. Um, so reminding you that we have Diego, um, Diego, Albert, Ana Magalhães, uh, Professora Cristina Silva, Cristiano Carvalho, uh, and also Beatriz Bernardes, and of course Manuel Pizarro, uh, who are available to uh, answer to your questions. So my first question will be to, to Diego. Um, Diego, are you using also reusable Bluetooth loggers or disposable units? Hi, and uh, reusable. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Yeah, reusable. Do you receive my answer? I didn't listen to it. I, I believe everyone else did, but except me, maybe. <laughs> no, it's simple, it's reusable. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so now, uh, Cristiano, also a question for you. Um, so, um, do the, 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 the smart cover have to comply with any local uh, regulations regarding the medicine, uh, medicine temperatures, transportation in the range of 15 degrees centigrade to 25 degrees centigrade? You're on mute. Can you please unmute? Sorry, I understand. Can you repeat, please? Yes. The so the question was: um, Do is there any local regulations uh, in in See. South American countries that the, the 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 smart covers have to comply in order to um, transport medicines? Uh, in the range, in the temperature range of 15 degrees to 25 degrees centigrade. Okay, uh, yes, uh, uh, attend the regulation because uh, recent uh, we have a new RDC 304 is attend uh, um, its necessary control. Uh, we have a uh, monitoring. Uh, inside uh, the cover, it's attained uh, the regulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, thank you. Um, so Manuel, a question regarding reverse logistics. Who is taking care of the reverse logistics? Who uh, uh, will be sending the cover back to the loggers? Uh, after it arrives at the, the destination. Do you have an idea of ratio of uh, lost units? That idea is in the project, this, this loggers is integrated in the EQPCM cover. So, of course, everything we can do it in operation, but the, the idea of create this uh, EQPCM cover is, uh, is operating for the, 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 the company that buy and that make a plan to use it. But uh, uh, what we are going to do, we have to have a we have a port a portal that the, the, the customer have a login and can check all the the, the, the temperature and everything inform information because uh, and you believe this is confidential and uh, the customer must only know the operation. But the idea we we can have a, a login in the portal and the customer can control all the information that is important. And if you have another need, we can improvement in the system. It's not a problem. We are, um, it, this is a portfolio. We are in the beginning. Uh, we are close to the end, but we, uh, if you have more improvements, maybe you can do something. So, but I believe it's easily to, to, to every customer to organize it the best way and, uh, and for the goal that they need it. Okay, thank you. So total, custom, total customization, right? Tailor made. <laughs> uh, so Esteban, one question for you also. So by using the new uh, eco uh, cover, are there any changes in the way existing logistics will work? Um, I, I, I believe so. It depends on which, um, at which applications the, the cover could be used, at least here in Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that uh, probably, um, as this new system is available, new uh, and new new uh, routes that are not exploited will be. I mean, for certain products that we do not have a specific way of transport, we will we, we will have one. And as such, products that are not uh, maintained within temperature temperature ranges will be. And new um, routes and uh, new ways of transporting will be. Uh, will be incorporated into the Argentinian market. Okay, thank you. Um, and also a question for Albert. How widespread do you believe that uh, simulation softwares will be in the thermal chain, um, in thermal chain uh, logistics in the next five years? Well, uh, <laughs> prediction is always difficult, but uh, I think it is uh, something that is unavoidable. Uh, if you look at other industries, uh, such kind of simulation software is, is, uh, 
used for many, many years and with great su success. So I, uh, when we started to do this in, in this field, we were actually surprised that there was nothing used at that time. And I think that's basically not what the industrial standards in, in many other areas are. So I think uh, it, it, at some time it will be in, unavoidable and uh, with all the uh, things that we currently see with the uh, with, uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, situation, uh, people have been used, uh, are getting used much more to, to, uh, to digital work. What we're doing here right now is, is an example of it and uh, uh, using uh, computers in, in, in that way to uh, avoid extensive uh, uh, experimental setups, which are also expensive and, and uh, uh, need a lot of energy. So I think it is something that will uh, be unavoidable in, in the future. I would, I would guess, and that is our goal, that uh, it is basically standard within five years that uh, uh, this software is used. And not only for designing the packaging solutions, as uh, was the case here for, uh, done by APP, but I think it will also be a, a, a common tool to uh, be used uh, for, for uh, uh, lane qualification. So uh, pharma companies are using the software as well, just for the qualification uh, uh, part. So I think, uh, it will be a common tool and of course there's some hope because we are pro a provider of uh, such a tool uh, that that it is probably even faster than five years it, it really depends on 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 how people are uh, allowed to use it also by by regulation and uh, uh, I, we we see a, a large trend to towards digital solutions at this time thank you thank you albert um and also beatriz bernardes is it possible to ensure that a solution answers specific requirements without testing it in the field? Or in other words, without attempting to make a real delivery? No. So to make a, a so to certify that the product or the cover is it's uh, will uh, have a good performance and keep the temperature range within the product. Uh, range needed so all the tests are uh, needed to be performed so we need to make tests at different uh, loaded volumes at different temperature range external temperature range at, at different positions with minimum normally the tests are made in medium minimum medium and maximum load to guarantee that the cover in this case, will um, will be capable to maintain the temperature range between two and eight degrees, or fifty and twenty-five degrees, according to the, the specifications. So testing will give us real data and real information, and we don't need to try it to see if it works uh, with a real in the real world <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, but we need to we need to try that in the. So if someone bought the, the cover, we need to try in the real life, mm -hmm. in, in the real process, in the real process logistics to guarantee and to certify that it will work in the, in the client world. <laughs> and okay. It's necessary. Yes. yes, thank you. Anna Magalhães, how can organizations keep the balance between implementing innovative materials and developing cost-effective solutions. Uh, in this field, I think that our organizations will to have a strong research and development component. They will aim to uh, create added value in a product with the end user in mind using functional and innovative materials but uh, also to use more sustainable research, not only in terms of materials, but also of process. For example, we can introduce innovative materials, which for the most part will be more expensive, but on the other hand, decrease on a step of the process. Uh, and in this way, we will, we will able to develop innovative economic solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one also for Professor Cristina Silva. 
how important are these projects with private companies for the universities and why? This, this is uh, th this collaboration I think is important for university. I can give this example. Uh, I start the collaboration with uh, the company in this case because Beatrice at the time was doing an internship in the company and we were developing a project not for the smart cover but uh, for some transportation packages. And at the time I explained to Beatrice, we are going to do these calculations using this MATLAB and so on. And after one month or so, she, she came because I think Manuel uh, knew about SmartKai and had decided to, to acquire it. So this is, it is really a need as, as Albert mentioned. Also in relation to, to um, so it's, it's good because in a way we can later teach better the students, uh, prepare better for the market. And uh, yeah, and somehow I think uh, APP can say better if uh, this contribution helped, I think, on, on uh, speeding up uh, the, the work that was uh, elaborated. So yeah, I think it, as in any, in any field, uh, uh, at this moment that the company, at least in Portugal, companies are doing more and more collaboration um, uh, uh, between uh, universities, with universities, so what they call the Dead Valley, to, to help on uh, stopping this Dead Valley and have this uh, link because I think it's a win-win relation. We can help companies, and companies for sure can help us in preparing a, a better future. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Diego, um, I would ask you also, um, how important is innovation in the supply chain um, and in thermal chain management um, for uh, the economic value of a company's op operation? Oof. <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> innovation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Innovation is the key, no? Breakthrough mm -hmm. the many ideas is the key. Uh, in my case, my responsibility is to, to have the better innovation, especially in the logistics aspect. Prepare the company not only with the our industry and also with the entire health ecosystem because uh, the competition is coming from different industry and we have to see the entire health ecosystem and we need innovation to this. So it's a key, innovation is very important. Okay, thank you. So um, I think we can close our Q&A sessions for now and uh, I will give the floor to Manuel Pizarro to, to say some final words on this uh, webinar. Uh, Manuel? I believe Diego say the key is innovation. <laughs> Get the solution is our goal. So of course I'd like to thank you very much uh, all the, thank all the panelists. Uh, this is the Russian American uh, Diogo D'Agoto uh, from Pfizer, Steven Tubert from CDO AP, AP Argentina and Cristiano Carvalho from uh, AP Argentina. Of course, I have to thank again to Ana Magalhães from Senti, Cristina Silva and Beatriz Bernardes from Católica. Again, and very thankful for uh, Alberto Retail from SmartKai. It was very important for to get time and uh, get the solution. And they, they, I believe they, with the explanation that they give here help us understand better why we go from such uh, uh, smart guy. Uh, I said already Annie Magalhães. And uh, what uh, uh, this is the, the, this, the, the idea of these webinars is to have the opportunity to, to talk and debate with every specialist and customers and study, the people that study new solutions because who is speaking and debating that we manage the new thermal chain innovations. And here from experts, uh, experts here like Diego, Cienti, Esteban, uh, I believe we have the same problems in different parts of the world. We have the same problems in America and Europe. 
but different log different logistics. But uh, uh, listen for the goals problems. We can get to the goal and help uh, this uh, key that uh, Diego say very good. We need innovation to make uh, more operations with. Uh, uh, the money that we can, uh, the, the, the medicines in our days are so many, most of them don't need to be uh, able to have excursions, so we have to have good solutions. And uh, what can I say more? I hope soon you continue this dynamic of the Innovation Lab Talks uh, with the help of uh, everyone who can enrich this conversation. Of course, I have to give a thank you to Sofia Carto and Loyal Advisory. And Marshall Brandt, the guy that get all help us to do this every time. Thank you very much for all for this time. I hope everything like it. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. And I want to thank all our participants and of course our speakers for joining us and for the interesting discussion we had today. Uh, it was uh, quite uh, an interesting hour and, and a few minutes. Um, I will be leaving just saying one that uh, our participants will receive a small survey that we will, we will would be very thank you that, that thankful that uh, if you could answer so we can help and develop another more uh, innovation live talks in the future directed for you uh, and we will close this webinar with a, a, a sample a video that will show you how this uh, smart uh, cover could work for you. Thank you very much and bye bye. See you next time. We seem to have some technical difficulties. <laughs> Happens to all of us. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh, well, it couldn't go completely 100% perfect, right? So um, we will be passing on the video. It's uh, answering as it speaks, as you speak. And uh, um, I, beg, I beg your, uh, your patience and uh, thank you very much. So apparently technology is not helping us at all. Um, I believe we will ask you for your forgiveness for this and we will ask, we will send the, the, the link in our thank you email so you can of course see how, uh, how it works. And we, we, will, we thank you and we will be closing this webinar today. Thank you so much for your participation. See you next time.